in living your dream, whether it's going to be in Hollywood, whether it's call to ministry, whether it's political, mm -hmm. whatever it has to do with, there is a warfare that you have to enter into about your image, mm -hmm. your self-portrait. Mm -hmm. Let's deal with that for a moment because perhaps there, I'm sure there are many people watching who may not like their self-image and they may not like who they look like or who someone's sure. told them they are. Sure. How have you dealt with that and how have you overcome any area? Some people look at you and say, oh, she's gorgeous, she's beautiful, she's this, she's that. Uh, but how did you deal with the image portraits that you had to fight with? You know, I still go through it every day. I mean, it's hard when you're, everybody's always going to be skinnier, prettier, this all kinds of stuff. But you know what? I had to say to myself, God designed me the, exactly the way I'm supposed to be. So I'm, I not like to that. sound conceited, it's not like that, but I I'm like perfect that. the way I am. Mm -hmm. And it's okay that, you know, sometimes I may feel a little fat. Okay, well, so then I go work out and mm -hmm. I feel better about myself. I do something about it. I don't sit there and cry about it or feel mm -hmm. sorry for myself. That's like my number one pet peeve when people just, <laughs> you know. Um, cry, cry, whine, whine, get up yeah. and work at it. And so everything takes hard work. And um, I don't necessarily think that just because you're, um, you didn't get the job means that you're not pretty enough or um, not talented enough. You just might not have been right for the role, right. or it just may not have been for you, but so what? You keep it moving. So yeah. I, want you, I want you to go a little bit further than that because you know we've talked uh, a lot mm -hmm. in the past, and we've worked and encouraged others. We won't mention names or anything, and when <laughs> they go through uh, self-image problems, rejection. If that's if that's not a killer, I don't know what is. And perhaps you know, you you, you deal with rejection sure. uh, in that industry, and rejections can be relentless before that mm. right door opens up for you. Mm. What is crucial in your pursuit of your dream in dealing with rejection? What is a must do when rejection comes? When rejection comes, I well. Now I, I'm kind of immune to it where it doesn't phase me or it doesn't, you know, but I just know that that whatever God has planned is what's going to happen. So it's not me. It's not it's <laughs> it's it's already written. So I, I can't even I leave it up to God. Hold on. Now that's deep. <laughs> it's already written. Mm -hmm. That sounds like predestination to me. <laughs> whatever is going to be, God has made it for me. It's going to happen. He already has it planned. So who am I to try to, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In the pursuit of a dream, you deal with the image, you deal with the uh, rejections. Then there's a lot of obstacles that I know. You know, I'm in ministry full time. Mm -hmm. you're, you're there and, and your ministry is in the entertainment industry. Uh, we'll be getting into other aspects in a moment of what you do. But um, really staying focused. That is such a crucial thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you do to keep your focus on focus as opposed to on other things? And we won't get into other things for oh. a moment yet. We'll get into those in a moment. Mm -hmm. But what do you do to share with the, us and with the viewers as to how do you keep your focus on focus? Well, there's a saying that says you practice what you become. I mean, you become what you practice the right. most. So if I'm not trying to be a part of a certain environment, I try to keep a really good environment, mm -hmm. which, which um, includes friends and activities and stuff I do on the side, um, away from my career. Or, you know, even when I'm pursuing my career, it's like, okay, I, I know um, the opinions I get, I consider the source, you know, and how I value that. Mm -hmm. um, staying focused, it's, it's hard. It's mm -hmm. hard. I can't say I'm perfect. Mm -hmm. But I try to stay in the church every one, once a week or twice a week. I go to service with my friend Terica. Mm -hmm. um, and I really try to stay away from temptations wow. that are negative. Because I already know that um, it has been a struggle of mine to stay, um, you know, because I'm only human. Mm -hmm. I'm only human. But, you know, I pray. I, I, I pray every night. And I thank God for everything that I have. I don't just go to him just for when things go wrong, but I also thank him for the blessings that I, I like have that. in my life. I love that. I don't just go when it's wrong. I go just because mm -hmm. I, he's my life. I love that. It's easy to do that. You know, you could, <laughs> please, Lord, help me, you know. Get me out of this. I promise yeah. not to do it again tomorrow, next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, you know, let's go back to the beginning of yeah. this interview. I'm Gina, a Christian. Would you <laughs> say that's your base to keeping you who you are. I am Gina, a Christian. 
no matter what acting role I take on, the base is I'm a believer in Christ. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's your fundamental base? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a fundamental base. Um, you know, we're in a relationship-driven <laughs> society. Yes. Are you ready for this? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. What, oh. um, no names now. Everyone, <laughs> I'm going to leave that to you. Okay. <laughs> everyone, you know, if, if, you're, if you're single, if mm -hmm. you're uh, alone, uh, you've gone through a, a, a past bad relationship and all kinds of things have happened, the, you've got all kinds of images that you have to deal with. Let's first, in your, in your very industry, and mm -hmm. as a Christian and as a believer, mm. um, how do you navigate the waters of being uh, a single actress in that industry and staying whole and staying focused? What are some of the pitfalls <laughs> that has come your way without going into details? You know, it's, it's hard, I have to say. It is so hard. Um, because I am human and, you know, I have dated a lot in mm -hmm. my life. Um, you know, boyfriends come and go. But I think the key thing is at this point in my life, it's about finding the right man that, like you said earlier, you know, that's going to equally yoke with me, um, that believes in what I do, what I believe in, that are going to, that's going to walk the same path that I'm going to walk. Because if not, we're going to be going and we're going to be clashing in all kinds of directions. So um, I kind of I kind of nip it in the bud from the beginning. You know, I have my standards like and, and it, it means a lot to me. I can't compromise my faith mm -hmm. for a man. That's all I got to say. No, that's deep. I like that. You can't and you won't and you don't. And you, and you have standards. Uh, you know, you got a lot of people who uh, who are watching <laughs> this program and uh, they eat, drink, and sleep wanting to have somebody they don't have. Mm. They've been through a number of different relationships, mm. and then they get to a point to where they feel like they are worthless, perhaps, because they've, been, they've sold themselves out mm -hmm. at accepting different things into their life. Mm -hmm. And you've avoided accepting substandard relationships where people come and say, well, hey, this is who I am, and if you want me, I'm going to still do this while I play mm -hmm. with you. How have you avoided that? It's been hard, Pastor. It's been hard. I mean, I think I shared with you earlier in private, you know, I had a, I had a recent situation that was so, I mean, you know, sometimes it comes in such a well-packaged, such a tempting package, mm -hmm. and you're just like, you got stars in your eyes, you know, and it's hard to resist the temptation. Mm -hmm. But I'm so proud of myself, I have to say, that I, was, I said, I stood my ground and I said, no, I can't go there. You know, I got to break my patterns because I'm human. Like I said, I've made mistakes in the past. But, you know, the definition of insanity is expecting the same results, doing different, I mean. Doing uh, the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Exactly. <laughs> I got exactly. you. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I just have to say that it's, it's, um, it's, been, it's been a tough time. Um, but. I'm not afraid to be alone. I'd rather be single than waste my time on the wrong man. So. But you've risen above it, and now you're beginning to shine. <laughs> and one of the things that I know, uh, just from knowing you personally, that's helping you shine is the fact that you sing. And you sing, I've heard you sing via some of your uh, things that are on your website with uh, you sing the national anthem. Oh, yeah. Uh, many different sports events, and most recently the largest at Dodger Stadium. Mm -hmm. And in just a moment, we're going to go to a song that you sing. The people can see another side of you. Okay. And this song has to do with opening your heart. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's going to minister unto all of those that are watching. Listen to this song. Let it speak to you. And we'll be right back. <laughs> 